Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's venture into the world of complex exponentials and complex variables. So what we're doing now is we're going to let z equals x plus i y, where x and y, of course, are variables. Therefore, the name complex variables. And we have to remember that e to the z, z could be anything, can be expressed as an infinite series and therefore it can be written as 1 plus z plus z squared over 2 factorial plus z cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. Also we need to keep in mind that i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, i to the fourth is 1 and so forth because we're going to need that. Now if we let e to the z equal to e to the x plus i y since of course z is equal to this that means we can write this now as follows. This can now be written as e to the x times e to the i y. And now we're going to expand each one of these just like we did there separately. So now this can be written as e to the x of course can now be written as 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus and so forth. And we're going to then multiply that times e to the i y and we're going to expand e to the i y in exactly the same way. But now of course we have that i there and when we square it, cube it, quadruple it and so forth we're going to have to take into account the value for that. So that means we're going to have e to the 0 will be 1 plus instead of z, we're, instead of the exponent x we're now going to have i times y plus i times y squared over 2 factorial plus i times y cubed over 3 factorial plus i times, oop, forgot my i there, i times y to the 4th over 4 factorial plus i times y to the 5th over 5 factorial and so forth. And plus like that. Now, this part, of course, is simply going to be e to the x. But what is this going to be equal to? Well, let's go ahead and expand that. So we're going to take this part right here and expand it and write this as simply e to the x. So this becomes e to the x times, but realizing that every other term is going to be a real number because i squared is negative 1, i to the fourth is 1, i to the sixth is negative 1. So every other term is going to be a real number and every other term is going to be an imaginary number because we'll have i to the first power, i third, i to the fifth, and so forth. So we're going to separate those. We're going to separate all the real numbers from all the imaginary numbers. So that means we have 1, and then here we have i squared, which is a negative 1, so that means minus y squared over 2 factorial. And then we get plus i to the fourth is 1, so we get y to the fourth over 4 factorial minus y to the sixth over 6 factorial plus y to the eighth over 8 factorial minus plus and so forth. And then we're going to add to that the other half of the elements in there. So we're going to have the i times y and matter of fact I'm going to factor out an i and multiply it times y and this, since we factor out an i, we have an i squared left, that's a negative, y cubed over 3 factorial, and then plus, because we, we already factor out an i, that leaves us with an i to the 4th power, which is 1, so that would be y to the 5th power over 5 factorial minus y to the 7th power over 7 factorial plus y to the 9th power over 9 factorial, and at this point you begin to see the pattern. So now that means that this can be expanded in terms of e to the x times what this is equal to which is going to be the sum of two infinite series. Now when we take a look at that we realize that this is actually the cosine of y and this is actually the sine of y which means that this can now be reduced to e to the x times the cosine of y, and here we're going to get plus i times the sine of y. Now, e to the z, which was written as e to the x plus i y, 
can be written as this infinite series expansion. Now, what that also means is if we simply look at e to the x times e to the i y, which is equal to e to the x times the cosine of y plus i times the sine of y, then we realize that e to the i y is equal to this. So ultimately, we can then conclude that e to the i y is equal to the cosine of y plus i times the sine of y. So now, in conclusion, we can then see that e to the z can be written as the product of e to the x times e to the i y, and e to the i y can be expanded as follows. And that is known as Euler's how do you pronounce it? Euler. Euler's. Wow. I can't, I can't pronounce that. And that is known as Euler's equation. So now I have a very interesting connection between the cosine and the sine function using the complex number i and the exponential with the exponent being a complex number as well. So it's interesting how we can come up with these relationships that really help us in a mathematical sense to solve some fairly difficult problems in the future. So this is a very important connection between complex variables, using them as exponents, and then coming up with the Euler's equation. That's how it's done.